So number 11 then from paper 2 of the 2021 National 5 resource paper, volume of a cone for 5 marks. Now the only reason it's 5 marks for working out the volume of a cone, means you've got the volume at the front, is because you're not actually told the height of this cone. You've got this dimension here, you've got the slant height. That's the dimension you would want to work out the surface area. So you've got that preliminary calculation to do, and you've also to express your answer a particular way, two significant figures. Well, the first part would be what's the actual height, because that's what you want for the formula. One third pi r squared h perpendicular height, not slant height. Well, that's, it's a right angle triangle, that's Pythagoras. So h squared would be the longest side, hypotenuse, 14.5 squared, minus that short side, minus four squared. Putting that down is worth a mark. You may well have just gone straight in with this. The square root of 14.5 squared minus 4 squared, because after all, it's a calculator paper, so you don't need to work those out first of all. You can do that in one go. So putting that into your calculator gives you, well, obviously it gives you that square root first, gives you 13.9373 and so on. Now, the next time I'm going to use that H is going to be the final answer. So I'm not going to press equals again until I've incorporated this. So I could leave that accurate just now. If you didn't want to, then what you could do instead would be round this off. But if you're going to round it off, make sure you round it off to more figures than you need in your answer. The answer wants two significant figures. So make sure you give this one three. So if you did want to round it off, you could put 13.9. But I'm going to leave it like this though. And it'll look strange with the dot, dot, dot. That just means it's exact. And what that also means is I've still got it. It's in my calculator. It's stored there. So that's centimetres. Now that's not a requested answer, so it's okay to leave it like that. Now that part was worth a mark. Getting the answer to this. Now you just put down the formula. So V is going to be one third of pi r squared h. So it's one third of pi times, the radius is four, so it's four squared times this. So you're either going to put 13.9, or I'm going to put 13.9373 dot, dot, dot. Because when I come to do this calculation, I can just put answer here, instead of typing in 13.9, for instance. So there's the calculation. The third's underneath. Pi, radius squared four, answer, because that's still stored there, the whole lot stored there. So when I press the button, I get 233.522 and so on, which is completely accurate, but it only wants it to two significant figures. So it was a bit of a waste keeping all those figures, all that accuracy. So two significant figures just means the two and the three. So that just goes to zero because I don't want three figures and it's not going to increase that three. Now, where were the marks? Well, there was one for substituting the figure you had for the height into the volume of a cone. There was one for getting this answer, the actual answer, but the separate mark at the end was for writing it the way that you were asked to two significant figures. And don't forget, although I didn't see a mark for that. It was a volume, so that was centimetres cubed. So using those three figures should still have given the same answer correct to two figures. So if I go back to the calculation and knock out that answer and actually put in 13.9, which is what you should have done, and then recalculate it, and of course get it to a decimal, you've got 232, I'll put it down, you've got 232.896, so notice it's different in this figure here already, but that's because you've made sure you've used one more figure, so it'll round off to the two figures you want. Because to two figures it's accurate. That to two figures would be two, and that three would stay because it's only a two there. So that still gives the same result. So number 12 for three marks. Express this, this division of two fractional expressions, as a single fraction in its simplest form. It's actually fairly straightforward. 
Now, this little bit at the side, these statements here are just like a disclaimer, like a legal disclaimer that you get in the side of a bleach bottle that would say, don't drink this. So this just says, don't try putting any of these numbers into this because it'll just blow up because you can't divide by zero. Look, if y was zero, if y was negative five, and later you'll see the x, well, what do you do to make it into a single fraction? You carry out the operation, except don't divide, multiply by what's called the multiplicative inverse. That is, you turn it upside down, use the reciprocal. So that would be y plus five on top in the numerator and the two x squared down below in the denominator. Doing that gets you the first mark because that then facilitates that operation. Now it's just a case of you would multiply the numerator, multiply the denominators, and that would be your answer. Unless it can be simplified. And if it can be simplified, you better doing it first rather than later. So is there anything that will divide into the top and the bottom? Oh, uh -huh, two. Two will go into them both. So I'll put a note here. So will x. So if you divide the top and the bottom by two and by x, this is what you'll end up with. That'll get knocked down to three. So now I can multiply them the three times that. Remember, there's two terms there. They go in a bracket. So three times y plus five, and you're just left with a single x here. So that'd be either yx or xy. There's actually a convention that says, put them down in alphabetical order. But it doesn't matter which way you put them down for this mark in this exam. But that's the convention for it. Now, the two marks were actually just for doing these two parts. But I think I'll put one there and the other one just for getting the final result expressed neatly.